Hello, on this video, I'm going to show you how to create a function and also how to use it. A function is just a block of code that does something for you. On that function, you're going to create whatever code you want. And then every time you want that piece of code to execute, you just call the function. So let's take a look on the code now. I'm going to define a function here. And to define a function, I need to use the word DEF and then the name of the function that I want to create. So this function is going to be called show menu. And then a semicolon. And then here is where you write the code. Before we continue here, let's talk about the name of the function. The name of the function is important. Every time you name a function, you should name with something that starts with a verb. For example, print, menu, or get, user age, or calculate a price, or show something. The function performs an action. So it's easy for someone else reading your code to understand what a function does based on its name. So my function is show menu. So this function is just, well, show menu. So I'm going to write some code here to show menu. All right, so this function just shows a very simple menu for now. So if I run this code now, nothing happens. And then nothing happens because I'm not calling this function. To work with a function, there are two things that come in play. One is the function itself, and the other one is the function call. So this here is my function, and now I need to call the function. And for that, I'm going to just use the name of the function that I want to execute now. And the name of the function is show menu. So I'm going to call the show menu function. And now if I run the code, this function gets executed because I'm calling the function right here. So I'm going to run it. And the welcome to my store gets executed. If I want to execute this code again, all I have to do is call the function again. So the code gets executed twice, and I can do it as many times as I want. So one of the advantages of having a function is that you write the code once, and you can call it multiple times. So the next thing to learn on functions is arguments. The function that we just learned has no arguments. Now let's try a function that has one or multiple arguments. So the argument is whatever you pass to a function. So in this case here on line 14, when I'm calling the show menu function, I'm not passing any value. If I want to pass a value to this function, I need to first declare right here a variable that this function will be receiving. So let's say this function will be receiving a store name. And then I want to print the store name right here instead of printing my store. So I'm going to delete the my store and then comma store name. So this means that this function now wants to receive a variable as a parameter. And it looks like this variable here is a string. So if I call this function now, I'm not passing any value whatsoever. If I want to pass a value, I'll put it right here within the parentheses. But in this case, the way it is right now, this function wants to receive a string, but the function call is not passing anything. So if I try to run this code right now, you'll give me an error. And the error right here says missing one require argument. Then the argument is a store name. So I'm not passing anything here. So because of that, I must pass some variable right here. So I'm going to pass a string right here. And I'm going to name this the general store. So now if I run this code, it executes just fine. And it prints the general store. So whatever argument I passed got assigned to the store name, and then the store name got printed right here in the function. 
instead of using the string right here, I can also create a variable for me. And I'm going to create a variable called my store name. And then I'm going to pass the variable as a parameter. And if I run, it works again just fine. So the reason I'm showing this to you is to show you that this name here does not need to be like this name here. It can be something totally different. This variable here can only be seen on this block of code. Now, if you want to keep it the same, no problem. I'm going to keep it the same here. And I run and everything works just as fine. So now, can I pass more than one parameter? The answer is yes. So here I'm passing the my store name and I'm going to pass banana. So I want to pass the product name as well to this function right here. So I'm going to put a comma and then the other variable name. If I run this program right now, it will give me an error because now I'm passing two variables and here I'm receiving just one. So this will be an error. So I have to create another variable here so this function can receive the variable. So I'm going to put a comma here and then product name. And then I print, we sell the product name. So if I run this now, I get the welcome to the general store and then we sell bananas. And I can call this show menu with different values and it's going to work just as fine. And you can have multiple variables here as well when you call the function as long as the function also receives the equal amount of variables. Now let's take a look on the next topic, which is the return on a function. So here in this function, I'm passing multiple values and I'm not returning anything. The return is used right here on your function. And this return is when this function wants to pass a value back to the function call. So the function call passes a value from here to the function. If the function wants to pass a value from here back to the function call, then we're going to use the return feature. So for now, I just want to return a number 21. Now note that if I run this program right now, there'll be no error. And the reason there will be no error is because the number 21 gets returned and right here in the code, you don't do anything with it. In this case, it's okay not to do anything with the returning value. But then you miss whatever the function returns. So if I want to save the value that the function is returning, I do need to create a variable and then I need to save the value to a variable. And the way I save the value that the function is returning is just by assigning a variable to the function call. So 21 in this case gets replaced by the function call. So now I have 21 that will be stored on a user option variable. And then later if I want to print this variable, I can print right here and now I'm going to run this code. And then I get the menu that got printed from the function. And then the function returned the number 21. And then the number 21 got replaced by the function call. Then got assigned to my variable. And finally, it gets printed by the print function. And that's the value right here. So this is how you pass information from and to the function. Right here, we're just returning the number 21, but I would like to get this information from the user. 
And now that I get the information from the user, I'm going to return whatever the user typed, which in this case is the user option. So now if I run this program, my function call calls the function, and then here it's waiting for me to type something. So I'm gonna type 45, press enter, and then the 45 gets assigned to the user option, and then the show menu function returns that user option. The user option gets saved right here and then gets printed right here. The next topic here is to use a default value on a function. So let's hear here in my case, I'm passing two values right here, but let's say I do not wanna pass two values. I just wanna pass one value. So if I wanna pass one value, but I still wanna use this function, if I just remove one of the parameters, and if I run this code, the code breaks. But let's say I have a product name that will be the same very, very, very often. Let's say 90% of the time when I call this function, the product name will be the same. If that's the case, then I can assign a default value to product name. So then every time I call this function, I do not need to pass the product name. And by having the parameter right here, whenever I have a different product name, then I can pass the product name and then it will overwrite the default value. So to create a default value right here on this function, I'm just gonna assign a value and the value is going to be banana. So now every time I call this function, and I pass just one parameter, then this function will work, but the second parameter right here will assume the default value. So let's run this program now. If I wanna call the same function now, but I do not want the default value, all I have to do is pass a different value here. So I'm gonna pass here the product name and instead of assigning banana, I'm gonna assign pineapple. So now I'm passing two parameters and the second parameter, I'm actually passing a value. So when I pass the value here, it overrides the default value and it will use the pineapple. So I'm gonna run this program. So there it is. So the default value got overwritten by the value that I just passed. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.